please welcome Martin Armstrong. Thank you. 
mother to vote. When I spoke to a lot of them, I asked them why. They said, because it really doesn't matter. The last government was corrupt. This one will be corrupt. And whatever we vote for, they don't do anything. You take the structure of Europe. You probably read in newspapers the big triarchal. And nobody actually votes for them. One is the head of the IMF, not an elected position. The other one's the head of the central bank, not an elected position. And then you have the head of the EC, you know, of the really the EU commission. He's not elected. Nobody's elected. And then you have fine the Brussels Parliament, it sounds very nice. You elect people to go there. The commission, by the law, does not have to listen to what they say. So it's basically we have devolved into a dictatorship. And it's really a question of who's in charge. And we saw that with Obama, for example, where he stood up against Bush and said, oh, we did the NSA, Guantanamo Bay, etc. Then he takes office, he does exactly the same thing. Is it Obama or is it the underbelly which is not elected? And they say, okay, fine, you come in now, this is how it's done. So this is a rising trend, not just in the United States, it's absolutely everywhere. Scotland wants to leave uh, Britain, you have the EU wants to leave uh, Brussels just last weekend, you had the Catalan vote in Spain to separate from Spain. Everybody wants to go someplace else. Texas has got a, a, a movement now to separate from the United States. We're talking about California should really be broken up into seven states. Why? It's all because of largely taxation. And it's not something that is really required anymore federally today. Why do I say that? Um, first of all, we've had, up until 1913, no direct taxation. But Thomas Jefferson said something very important. And he said he was against, effectively, any kind of a national debt. Why? Because he said that amounts to taxation without representation on the next generation. If we look at the national debt of the United States or Germany, any of them, 70% of the entire national debt is interest. It didn't go to help anybody. Uh, it didn't build schools, roads, or anything else. It goes to the bankers. And what you have, right down in the Middle East, the UAE, government doesn't need to borrow any money. The bankers are saying, gee, you should be issuing debt. Why? So we have something to trade. This is not a reason for a country to go into debt. Because now we're basically having to pay taxes to pay the interest. It is really the biggest uh, shift in wealth that nobody ever knows about. They stand up and they say, oh, well, we're going to tax the rich. That is the greatest uh, propaganda in every country I've ever seen. I was down in Australia, they put in the luxury tax. It sounded great. We're going to tax the rich, we're going to tax their Ferraris, their fur coats, and their French wines. Ferraris are already double taxed, so I ain't never saw two of them. It was too warm for fur coats, and everybody gave me Australian wine anyway. So, everybody cheered. Yeah, go get the rich. What was in it? All electric cars. They don't make any money from that. It's basically, it's everybody that they have to tax. And they, we've always heard, never all the time, tax the rich. But it's always ends up coming back to us. That's it. And then you have people say, oh, well, it's the 99% against the 1%. Sounds nice. What's 1% here in Vermont? $299,000. It's not one All right, and we, you know, you had Joe Biden in the election saying, oh, the Republicans were the super rich. Top income tax bracket is household income of 250. It's not billionaires. All right, so anyway, with a small business, etc. And they also basically talk about this stuff with, uh, oh, the rich make all the money, the top 1%. It's not income from the standpoint of salary. What are they talking about? It's investment income. Stock market goes up, oh, they made a lot of money. 
Well, why is the average people in society not participating? Because largely we are taxed, it goes into Social Security, and what happens? I actually worked down on Capitol Hill in the 90s trying to privatize Social Security where the money would really physically be invested. The Dow back then was 1,000 instead of 16,000, so it would have been a fairly nice return. Couldn't get it through. Why? Because they all wanted to be able to pick personally who would run what. So, and I just got angry. I said, listen, this isn't about giving your brother more a job. And that's what it is. It is every system you look at. You take uh, Bernie Frank, his uh, homosexual partner was running Fannie Mae. It's so incestual. Uh, Hillary Clinton becomes the Secretary of State. Her brother gets the suddenly the contract to mine and hate gold. Um, you have uh, Joe Biden. His son suddenly starts running a, uh, a company in, in Ukraine for energy. It is their families are involved in absolutely everything. And it has nothing to do with Republican or Democrat. It's both sides. It's just a free world. So, essentially what we really have to look at is we have a republic, and that is a representative form of government, which basically always fails. Why does it fail? Because it gets corrupted. And Brad was talking about law. You can look at Plato. There was a uh, debate that he wrote about between Socrates and Thrasymachus, most people haven't heard of it. But Socrates was wrong, and actually Thrasymachus was correct. The, the argument was over what is justice. And you had effectively Socrates saying, oh, justice, I don't trust the people. And Thrasymachus said he didn't care what kind of government it was. He said, justice is only the interest of the strong. And he's correct. No matter what government you look at, effectively, it is only about them. And what happens with us in going forward here is that these are our crises cyclically that we end up with. There is a business cycle. And most people don't realize in economics what it really is all about. It was effectively ever since Marx. In economics, the theory is, well, yes, there's a business cycle. I don't like it. I want it to be perpetually sunny every day. So what happens is they effectively pass uh, all kinds of things. Mark said, all right, fine. We'll take all the money away from the rich. We'll give it to the to government. Therefore, that way, it's a business cycle. Problem is, the people of government are just as corrupt as the head of corporations. There's no difference. So um, it's humanity. And ever since then, you've had Keynes saying, OK, fine, well, there's a business cycle. We can manipulate it. We can raise interest rates, lower interest rates to affect people. Now we're in a crisis with this theory. And Paul Volcker did a book in 1979. It's very expensive. There's nobody really wants to talk about it. It's called Rediscovery of the Business Cycle. The Fed chairman before him, Martha Burns, did the same thing. They both came out and said the business cycle always wins. And Volcker actually said the new form of economics with Keynes and Marx, etc., that the government can steer the economy, he said, has been proven incorrect. Nobody can beat it. So the problem is, is that we have people that are constantly in government saying, vote for me, and I'll do X, Y, Z. And then they never do, because they really don't have the power. They're, they're just lining their pockets. So why do we not need taxes if we're, we're in effect at this point in time? France, for example, up until about 1973, did not have a national debt. The, gov the, the government was funded by simply the central bank created money and lent it to them at 0%. What happens then? The bankers came in and said, we should be borrowing from the, from the public 
not from uh, the central bank. As a result, you now have a, cent you have a national debt, France can't pay it, they keep raising taxes, and it gets worse and worse. If unemployment in, in Europe, among the youth, they call it the lost generation, over 60%. We keep taxing and taxing and taxing, and it never goes down. It only goes up. But if money is no longer physical, it's not coins that we basically, okay, fine, government spends on them, now I physically have to get some back to be able to spend again. It's electronic. If it is, why are we borrowing money that we have no intention of paying back? It is exactly what Jefferson said. The younger generation is now being taxed for things that were spent 50, 60 years ago that they had no right to go in and it's basically taxation without representation. And this is what we're seeing on a global scale. Governments are absolutely dead broke. They are taking away our liberties left and right and it's all because they're trying to sustain power. Why? Because the governments are just dead broke. They don't have the money to continue. And this is why Trump is rising in the polls, Bernie Sanders, everywhere you look. Because people know something is wrong. Maybe they disagree with what it is, but everybody feels something's wrong. And the polls basically say, no matter what country you look at, the one unanimous factor is everybody believes that what we're leaving for our children is not as good as what we had. So what's the future going to be by 2032? It's not going to be anything close to this. Because most of your social programs are not funded. They never work. They tend to be Ponzi. So the whole system is actually going to be collapsed. And that's really what's going on. It is taxes that are going to keep raising and raising and raising. And who does the money go to? It goes to the bucket holders who are the bankers. That's it. You have Goldman Sachs, all right, biggest contributor to Obama. They contribute to the Democrats and to the Republicans. There's no political agenda here. It's just fine government. That's it. So, unfortunately, this is our outline for the future. We have to have really abolish government from, from borrowing money. We also have to stop the taxation because that is going to lead to our complete destruction of all civil liberties and we need political reform. The best political reform, I would say, is eliminate career politicians. I've worked with them in all countries. It's all the same. That's a change. We have limits on presidencies. It should be on every aspect of government. So thank you very much. Um, I'll leave you with that cheery note. <laughs> but hopefully, maybe you will start thinking about it, you know, and just question what is going on here. Money is 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 moving electronically. I mean, they used to print ten thousand dollar bills in the 1930s. They just go and get that eight hundred bucks. That's it. So. You know, they, they know where they're going, and it's about time we wake up and pay attention.